Welcome to All Things Madison, the podcast exclusively for kids. Sure to tickle your funny bone while learning something new at the same time. You'll hear from talking bears. Why that is such a big deal, I'll never know. Laughing unicorns. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Farting sloths. Hey, watch it. I'm lactose intolerant. I'm only gassy when I drink milk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're part of the show too. Even the folks in the dollhouse have a part. Bonjour. Hi. Hey, guys. Hi, y'all. Um, hello. Don't forget about the rest of us. Here's your host, Madison Lauren. Please enjoy the show. Hey, friends. Welcome to my show. Well, technically my bedroom, but you know what I mean. (laughs) Anyways, you might be wondering why it's called All Things Madison. Well, because I'm Madison, and it's about all the things I like. (laughs) Like, I love all my stuffed animals and dolls, and I got you to meet them. And of course, then there's my fave, Princess the Unicorn. Oh, Madison, you're my favorite too. You probably noticed that Princess is the inspiration behind my unicorn logo. Yep, that's her my friend and i like cooking my dad creating new characters uh, like my chimneys who eat worms talk in their own language and fight with some very <laughs> territorial birds see <laughs> and i love learning new stuff and the latest funny TikToks. i also really enjoyed writing my new graphic novel the magnificent shiros so what's the show about hmm funny season segments cool interviews, and behind the scenes, but mostly just trying to make kids and their parents laugh all while learning something new. That's right. Oh, hey, Daddy. I was just about to tell them that it's overall fun stuff for kids of all ages. And families. I also talk about the heavy stuff sometimes, too, like ocean pollution, climate change, or deforestation, because It's going to be up to us to fix it. But keep it fun. Right. Now on to the show. Miss Bassin, welcome to my show. It means a lot to me to have you speak to me and my audience. To help us stay focused in such crazy times. I know you're a busy woman, so I'll jump right to it. In reading your bio, I saw that you had written over 13 books over your career. That's a lot of books. Tell me, how did you do it? Well, first of all, I have 13 books that are published, right? I wrote a lot more than 13. I've written a lot of books that never got published. I've written a lot of books that stink, that are terrible, or books that I thought were pretty good, but nobody else did. (laughs) So it takes a lot more writing than what you actually, it's not like I wrote 13 books and oh, poof, I, I, published 13 books. Um, So how I do it is I sit down and I try really hard and I never give up and I keep writing. And if something stinks and it's no good, I just put it away and I try something else. So basically I just love it so much. I love doing it so much that I just keep doing it. You know what, if you keep doing something a lot, a lot, a lot, something's bound to come out pretty good, right? You hope? Yeah. So I. This is pretty much um, how I do it. I use my computer. We're so lucky to have the computers. I try to think about what it was like, you know, in the olden days, when they had to write it on paper? You know, how did they change something? How did they paste and copy? How did they search? I mean, wow, we have it lucky. It, it, a lot, anybody can write who has something to say or thinks they have something to say or just wants to say something, hmm. like you. Yeah. Yeah. Next question. When you were a kid like me, did you always want to become a writer? I did. How old are you? Seven, about to come eight. You're about to come eight. I wanted to be a writer so about 12 years old. So a little older than you because um, I'll tell you this story. You want, I'll tell you the story, okay? Really briefly. So um, 
when I was 12, I had lived a really hard life already. As you know, I lost my mom, but that was just the beginning of things going kind of bad for me. So I lost my mom, um, my dad remarried, then my, my dad left me, and then I lived with people that weren't my parents, and uh, I had, a, I had a, a, a stepfather figure who was very abusive, and then I got sent back to live with my dad when, my, when she got rid of me. So when I started sixth grade, I was really unhappy. I was really angry, and I was really lonely, and I didn't have anybody listening to me except my sixth grade English teacher. So I come to a new school, like, like you said you were doing, new school, new house, didn't, a, a, you know, a new stepmother, this is my third, we could talk about that later, and I got, I got in big trouble in school. I was failing school, I was, I was getting suspended, I was doing all sorts of acting out, and my English teacher, my language arts teacher, read one of my stories out loud in class. And from that moment on, I realized that writing was the way you can express yourself. And that all you need is one person to read, to listen, to hear you. And I changed my whole life. And I decided at 12 years old, I want to be a writer because this is a really good way to create and express yourself. And I'm sure you will find that too when you write. Hmm. Yeah. So interesting story. Interesting story. Thank you. Third question. As I surveyed your work, I found so many titles that you've written that I can relate to, such as what every girl except me knows, the lead of Cape Doesn't Have a Mom. And I too lost my mom at an early age. And I read in your bio that your mom died at the age of three. So did my mom. I feel like I can really relate to this kid so much, especially since I have often wanted my dad to marry again, so I can know, so I can know what having a mom feels like. Do you know what I mean? I definitely know what you mean, and I have, and I'm really sorry about your mom. Um, you know, it's something that that doesn't leave you, and and it affects you. You know, it'll it'll be part of who you are the rest of your life. Really, but. It'll make you somebody, as you just asked me, who has empathy and understanding for other people in a way people who haven't experienced loss will have. You will have a bigger heart and it gives you, it gives you an ability to understand what other people feel. And a lot of people have to wait a long time and, and maybe they never get that way. But when you have, when you have experienced something early, it becomes part of who you are. Mm -hmm. And I wrote my books because of my understanding of what that feels like, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, all my books have something about that, all of them. But in terms of wanting, um, you know, your dad to get married again and have somebody, I get it. I'll tell you, I have found moms in, in many other places. I have had lots of different women who became role models for me other moms my friends moms so i learned things and i be, i got a lot of love from a lot of different people so it doesn't just have to be your you know your birth mother you find moms when you look for them and when you choose them and when they choose you and i'm sure that will happen you'll be able to do that hmm. and also can i tell you one more thing yeah. Not having a mom doesn't mean that there's something you're not going to learn or get or figure out. It's in you. And sometimes I meet somebody who has a mom and I'm jealous. When I was your age, I'd be very jealous, even angry. You have a mom and I don't. But they don't know anything more than you do. I, I, I'm, it took me a long time to figure this out. We're all in this same kind of, oh, what are we doing? What am I going to do mode? And nobody knows anything more than you do. It's all inside you already. Whatever love you got, which you did, it's there. So it took me a long time to figure that out. So maybe, maybe you've already figured it out. Thank you, Sharon. Fourth question. What I can rent? I'm new to school this year, 
and I'm making new friends. It's tricky. Or a 19. Looks mm-hmm. like it could be taking place right now. The world is still then, and the world is then, it's still again now. My question is, as a young writer myself, how did you do about creating your such wonderful creative and storyline? Well, first of all, you are so right about what's happening now and 9-11. The, the, the way they're similar is, is pretty crazy, right? Um, 9-11 was, you know, one day and it had lasting effects and this is, is harder in a lot of ways. Um, but you're right, the world stood still, right? Now the world's keeping standing still. It's not even starting to move again. Um, so that was a really profound question you gave me. Not many people have made that connection. Um, the way I write, the way I get these characters is a lot of them are just me. They're just me. They're just little girls without their mother. Or like in 910, there's a character who's a lot like me. It's a boy, but he lives in Brooklyn. And there's, there's a lot of similarities. So um, the characters I don't really make up. I usually base them on, on what I'm feeling. Although you wouldn't recognize them on the outside. You know, they might be a boy. They, they might be whatever. I have an autistic boy in a character, but they're all me. Um, and I, I make up stories based on things I care very much about. I don't just say, oh, I'm going to make up a story. I come first from what do I feel? What am I passionate about? What am I caring about in the moment? So you write from what's in your heart. You wrote what you're feeling, you know? Does that make sense? So each of your characters are a little bit of yourself? Absolutely. Yes, they are. They are. I, I become that character, and that big character becomes me when I'm writing. So you have to... Um, maybe I don't make things up very well. <laughs> maybe I'm not that creative. I, I have a lot um, of feelings that I want to write about, so... Yes, the answer, the short and long answer is yes. Ah, okay. Question five. So while we're stuck in the house, sitting at home, what can kids do that's constructive if they're sitting around bored to death, but they hope to become a writer (laughs) one day like you? Are you bored to death? No. You're not. You know what? You can answer that question better than I can because look what you're doing. You are not bored. Look what you're doing. It's amazing. And here's my answer. I don't think there is such a thing as boredom. I, I don't. I, any, I think that if you have free time to think and play and create and do a podcast, you are not bored. And, and anyone who sits around and says they're bored, mm, they're not thinking, they're not enjoying life. They're waiting for something to happen and you made it happen. You're way ahead of the game. Thanks. Last question. What would you like to tell all the kids listening that might be a little inspiration in this very difficult time? Well, I don't know if I'm one to give any advice or inspiration, but, cause it's hard for me too. It's been kind of hard. Um, I've been writing a lot, a lot, a lot. So I'm using this time to do that. So um, that's inspiring to me, right? I think that kids should know that change is always hard and you have to get through it. Sometimes you have to go straight through it to get through it. You can't go around it. So something's changing. Our world is changing and one of the ways it's going to change is a lot more things are going to be done like this. I think there's going to be a lot more stuff online and a lot more virtual stuff. And the fact that you figured that out and you're doing this now is really smart. So my only words of inspiration would be create something new. Go, go out, find it, figure it out. You know, every generation, something changes. This is your, this is your time. It's going to be okay. Thanks. It's going to get better. Okay. Miss Baston, thank you for your time. Please tell my audience how they can find you. You can find me online. <laughs> you can find me at, at my website um, where I put pictures and I have writing classes 
that you can click on and take um, so that you can interact with me and I can have, I can see people and I enjoy that a lot, as you can tell. And it's called, just my name, norabaskin.com. That's where you can find me. Okay. We hope to have you on the show again one day soon. Please let us know when you release your next book. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That wraps up this episode of our show. Each week, we hope to bring something different, new, and exciting for the few last along the way. You'll see these segments along with others where I'll jump into the kitchen to teach you some of my favorite recipes or you'll see me talk to kids at different events around the city. Or maybe stuff dealing with fashion, sneaker culture, or other kids' influences. Either way, I'll always keep it spicy. So, be sure to give me a like, follow, or subscribe to keep up with us. To pre-order my new book, The Magnificent Sheroes, just go to shopmadisonlorn.com. Oh, yeah. And you'll find all my merch there, too. Remember, we love you just the way you are. Until next time, I'm out. Oh, and introducing the fantastical adventures of Sleepy Steve by my dad, the animated series. Coming to a screen near you soon. He's back. Get ready for the return of the funniest kid alive with the fantastical adventures of Sleepy Steve. And now he's animated. Cool. Where are we going? As we discovered, Steve's notorious sleep disorder isn't what it seems. Steve must find out as much as he can about his new power. How does he control it? What are his limits? And most of all, can he stop the mysterious evil villain Ratface with powers he hasn't mastered yet? Stay up to date on the launch of the coolest cartoon series coming to a screen near you. Thank you for listening to All Things Madison. Kindly take a moment to subscribe, leave a comment, and rate the show so that our participating partners know you are following along. You can get your Madison Lauren graphic tees at shopmadisonlauren.com or follow her YouTube channel at All Things Madison. This production was brought to you by Infinity Global Media Group, LLC. Contact us at smith.durante at gmail.com for bookings or more information.